This is the game of the weekend in college football. Now, I was, I was going to go with Ohio State laying the points, but I like the under instead. Under 46 and a hook. Here's why. I'm normally not a huge numbers guy, which is not the best thing to say when you're on a gambling show. But if you look at the numbers here, the defenses here are what really stand out to me. Penn State will want to run the ball, and when they do, this Buckeyes defense, second overall in the country, allowing the sixth fewest rushing yards in the country, eight fewest passing yards. Then look at the Nittany Lions, no slouches either. Great defensive squad, fourth overall in the country, eighth against the rush, 12th against the pass. This really feels like a 24-20 game, which would be in line with the spread as well. Yes, you've got a ton of talent at quarterback, but I think this is a game where the defense is rule. We're going to go under 46 and a half in Happy Valley. Good luck, Double D. That's right. We'll all be rooting for Penn State on this show because we're a team here. Uh, if you want to watch that one, Happy Valley is the setting for Buckeyes and Nittany Lions at noon Eastern on Saturday. Pick six. Pick six. All right, it's time to take a trip to the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. That's right. I'm going to go with Florida getting 16 and a half. And full disclosure, this line has gone all the way down to 15 in some spots uh, against Georgia. We know Georgia is a good team, but here's the thing. In the market, they have not been good at covering. They have not covered in five of their last six games. And we're getting two touchdowns here. I understand that Florida had a rough start this year, but since then, the market has been too low on them. They've covered in four straights. And DJ Lagway brings something to this offense that Graham Mertz could not. So I feel like Georgia this year, their offense just doesn't really get to that next level. I think Florida can hang. and This is a lot of points for a rivalry matchup. So we're going to go with the Gators getting 15, 16 and a half. You can still find it uh, in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Let's go Gators. If you want to check it out, it's SEC action. It is a 3.30 kickoff from Jacksonville. Pick six. Pick six. Okay. So this is of my three picks, the one I'm least confident about. But I'm going to take, I can't ignore this number. Number 18, Pittsburgh, getting more than a touchdown at number 20, SMU. Pittsburgh's getting seven and a half points. It feels like maybe this might be where Vegas is begging you to take Pittsburgh. So I get that. However, Pitt is off to a 7-0 start for the first time since 1982. And these two teams, when you look at them, they're very similar, which is why I don't understand why this number is so big. Again, maybe it's a trap. SMU has the 37th best defense in football. Pitt has the 48th ranked defense, but this Pitt defense is much more opportunistic, and we saw that last week against Syracuse. I would have been on the orange. Pittsburgh had three pick sixes in that game. SMU is also really banged up. Their quarterback, Kevin Jennings, is questionable. He'll probably play, but their leading receiver, Jake Bailey, is doubtful to questionable. He may not. And you're talking about a matchup that is essentially going to be for the ACC championship. It's not, but when you've got two teams at this point, this is going to be a championship game-like atmosphere. And when it is, I think seven and a half is way too much. Also, the Panthers against the spread, they keep defying the odds. Everyone keeps fading Pittsburgh. They're six, one, and one against the number. I'll go Pittsburgh plus seven and a half in Dallas against the Ponies. I'm not going to lie. I feel like their fight song was that Pitt's fight song. Seemed chaotic. That's not my favorite. So uh, sorry to the Pitt fans out there. Your fight <laughs> song is a little chaos. Uh, all right, if you want to watch that one, it is the big game and Big D on Saturday night. Uh, Panthers and Pony is squaring off at 7 Eastern. Pick six. Pick six. All right, so Jenks, you were mentioning lines that kind of look like a trap. This one fits the bill. Vandy yeah. is getting seven and a half now against Auburn. I understand that this is a road game, and Auburn fills out Jordan Hare. But still, what have we seen from Auburn this year to think that they should be seven-and-a-half-point favorites in this one? Okay, they won over Kentucky last week. All right, 24-10? to 10? No. Let me introduce you, if you haven't known already, to Vandy, the covering squad. As underdogs in their last four appearances, 4-0 and against the spread, and we've seen them do this against the best competition in the SEC, only losing by three to Texas. Uh, they won outright 
and two of those games is underdogs against Kentucky, against Alabama. So Diego Pavia also has a history against Auburn. When he was at New Mexico State, he beat Auburn. Uh, so Auburn's probably going to be seeing ghosts of Diego Pavia. Let's go Vandy getting the seven and a half uh, on the road at Auburn. One team stands alone at the very bottom. The 2024 Carolina Panthers led by Bryce Young. Oh, my God. What a bad football team this is. Don't they have one win? One win this season against the Raiders on the road? I'm going to keep fading. Mm -hmm. This is not the most difficult handicap. Guys, the Panthers are terrible. We all know this. They're also 1-9 and nine against the spread in their last 10. Bryce Young, God love him, man. He had two touchdowns, two picks last week in Denver. Denver has a really good defense. I'm trying to give you guys something. But ultimately... Derek Carr is back for New Orleans. This Panthers team is playing for nothing. Maybe they get a boost from starting Jonathan Brooks in the backfield. There's just not a real case to be made for Carolina. And you can still get this at seven. If it were seven and a hook, then maybe you start to think, I wouldn't play Carolina, but you think, okay, maybe Carolina's the right side here. But it's still at seven. Again, Carr back at quarterback for New Orleans. Saints minus seven in Charlotte. Yeah, there's no reason to make this more complicated than it is. Bryce Young is starting at quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. Now, it's not Spencer Radler starting for the Saints. It's Derek Carr. This feels like an NFL team going against a team that should be relegated, you know, to the lower levels. Because even if you look at the other aspects of the Panthers, their defense hasn't been good either. From a prop standpoint, I've been fading mm -hmm. their run uh, defense all season long, and now they're going against Alvin Kamara, who should have a big spot here uh, as somebody who – uh, needs a step up at quarterback to ho obviously make the run game more effective. And he gets a good matchup against this Carolina defense. It's been really bad against the run. So I'm not overthinking it. We're going to be, uh, as a squad, on the Saints, laying seven on the road at the Panthers. If you want to watch it, the Garbage Fest begins at 1 Eastern in Charlotte on Sunday. Big six. Big six. Oh, I'm going to keep riding the commander's train. Commanders minus three, minus 129 against the Giants. Now, I will say, full disclosure, when you look historically over the past few seasons, Giants and Commanders, the Giants have really owned Washington. And this is when Daniel Jones plays his best games. There's no question about that. But I will also say this is where trends can be a little bit misleading because that was a different Commanders ownership group, different quarterbacks, different coaches this is a completely reinvented Washington team and now you're talking about a division game where the commanders are just laying three there is the possibility sure it's a letdown spot after that Hail Mary last week where Noah Brown came down with the football and people in DC went nuts but the commanders have covered six straight games against teams with losing records and I just don't think the Giants have the offense they don't have enough juice in the tank to hang with this commander's team that can put up points by the dozen and don't sleep on the Washington defense either I think the commanders gather themselves after last week and they don't let this be a letdown spot they go into the Meadowlands and they cover commanders minus three is the call 